This is Afternoons on ABC Radio Canberra. Where it is, 12 minutes past three on ABC Radio Canberra. Did you recognise that bird that I played you? Here it is again. And that is the superb parrot, a rare parrot that is looking for new homes to start a family for the spring breeding season on the first day of spring. Well, Canberra ornithologist Neil Herms has uh, teamed up with his brother Ashley, uh, who is a farmer, to establish special nesting boxes. And Neil joins me. Good afternoon to you, Neil. Hi, Adrian. How are you going? Listen, I want to come round to your place if you've got superb parrots calling like that in your backyard. <laughs> I only wish, but you know the secrets to this, uh, Neil. Firstly, introduce us to this beautiful species. What do they look like? Look, superb parrots are, well, true to their name. They're superb. They are, the male is an intense, beautiful emerald green with this splash of yellow on the front, on the, on the cheeks, and then, uh, a little bit of red uh, on the breast and a, a touch of blue on the top. And the female is this exquisite b- uh, green bird as well. Quite big parrots, um, but just absolutely amazing to look at. They really are superb. And how common are they in our region, both in the ACT suburbs as well as the capital region, Neil? Well, look, estimates right vary, but people feel that there's probably around 10,000 of these birds now still in the wild, and they occur across a region down to Cootamundra, Gundagai, Wagga, out to Dubbo, um, and then in through Yass. And in recent years, in the last 10, 15, 20 years, they've been coming in more and more closely to Canberra through to Murrum Bateman, and then um, and there's quite a good population now in the northern Gungalan. Uh, suburbs around Mulligan's Flat but amazingly over the last five years or so they've been now spreading down through the suburbs from the north and we're now seeing them you know south of the lake in Woden and Tuggeranong as well which is just fantastic. That is so terrific to hear Neil. What do you attribute that to the superb parrots continuing to make a life in our region and moving into the suburbs? Well, it's a little hard to exactly predict why. I mean, they, they became very rare many decades ago. Uh, there was agricultural pressure. There was pressure from clearing trees and firewood trees being uh, removed and their nest boxes, nesting trees were removed. So there was a lot of pressure on them in the on the southwest slopes. Um, but they have been coming back. There's been a lot of great work done by farmers uh, in terms of planting trees um, and protecting regions along the sort of river course is where they occur and it's possible that it's a sort of a, a slight slurp, surplus of population and now moving into newer areas um, it's it, it, there are some predictions that uh, they they may be finding that the that the habitats around Canberra now are are better suited to them and certainly the protection we've given them for example around the north of Throsby there along the ACT border in terms of protecting some tree areas that certainly will be contributing to the numbers we're now seeing in in, in and around Canberra you're listening to Neil Hermes, uh, Canberra ornithologist. We're talking about superb parrots that are making a bit of a comeback, particularly in the suburbs of Canberra. You mentioned that figure of an estimated population of around 10,000, Neil. So are we expecting that that number has climbed then with their move into the suburbs of Canberra and the protection that some suburbs are offering them here in Canberra? Look, it's possible. I mean, I don't want to overestimate this. I mean, they are still a very rare bird. They're still a, you know, a threatened species. They're still a bird we have a lot of concern about. They have been in, a, a declared endangered in places. Um, so, you know, they're still extremely vulnerable, but there's these signs of them picking up. Now, the big problem, of course, is they love nesting in very old trees. And these trees may take a hundred years to grow to a point where they, they are suitable for the birds. So we could face, uh, you know, a gap in the number of trees that are available for the population uh, over the next couple of decades until a lot of these younger trees that are being planted in places uh, become mature trees again and replace the ones that have sadly been cleared on a lot of properties still.
Now, let's bring in your brother now because you've teamed up with your brother, regional farmer Ashley Hermes, to erect special nest boxes for the superb parrots. And Ashley and Caroline Herms have a property at Bethungra near Cootamundra in regional New South Wales. Ashley joins us. Oh, the delightful sounds of birds, Ashley. Right where you are on cue. Yuma, good afternoon to you, Ashley. Good afternoon. Why did you want to get involved, Ashley? Oh, my wife and I have had a lifetime interest in this. We've uh, owned property uh, at Yas, Gundagai and uh, Cootamundra for about 40 years. And uh, every year we try to uh, pick a project that we uh, throw ourselves into and uh, that's uh, part of the joys of living on a, on a significant rural property. And so, Ashley, tell me how you're involved in this project to really support the recovery of the superb parrot. Uh, well, we've been planting uh, yellow box trees, uh, the, the tree that they nest in, uh, uh, out this way for a number of years, although that's a long-term project. It might be 100 years before they're useful, but we also do plant uh, the wattles and things that they feed on out here. And uh, we've been, for a couple of years, we've been putting up nest boxes. Uh, this year we had a big push and we put up, a, I don't know, 50-odd nest boxes we've got up now uh, for these birds in particular. Um, and uh, we're hoping uh, that they'll be colonised. We do have a number of native, uh, naturally occurring uh, nests on this property. Uh, could be half a dozen pairs on this property that nest every year here. So we're sort of trying to enhance that and lift their numbers. That's a lot of boxes, 50 nesting boxes. Give us an insight into the approach you took to create the boxes and uh, for anyone at home who might want to do the same to support the superb parrots, Ashley. Uh, well, my my approach is a bit different to my brother's. He uh, he produced uh, some uh, boxes made out of uh, uh, plywood and uh, uh, very significant size boxes. I uh, cut some hollow logs that were on the ground uh, and put tops and bottoms and cut holes in them and, and raised those back up into the trees. So we've got a mix of naturally occurring log boxes and also uh, sort of uh, fabricated uh, made uh, boxes. So we're sort of trying to investigate what... Uh, what box suits them best. Uh, we have had other birds nesting in them and uh, squirrel gliders and, and those sorts of things visiting them uh, and sadly bees. Um, but uh, we haven't yet snagged a superb parrot nesting in one of these boxes, but uh, thing, uh, things uh, should look up, I hope. Ashley, was it expensive to construct the 50 nesting boxes? It's a, a oh, big commitment. It, it is a bit of a commitment, but we 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 also fenced off about three acres this year and planted uh, hundreds of trees and created a small wetland. So we're we're committed to it. Um, I wish uh, some of my neighbours were as committed as me, uh, but we're doing our bit and trying uh, trying to beat the decline of the natural environment out this way. Uh, the the natural boxes uh, were just time consuming. Uh, the fabricated ones uh, add up to some money and. Uh, we also had to hire a knuckle boom to get them up sufficiently high in the trees to attract the birds. So there was some expense, but uh, it's it's our hobby, it's our uh, it's our passion. So uh, really, the the cost of it doesn't matter. Why are you and your wife Caroline so passionate about work to restore the habitat and support the recovery of the superb parrot at your property, Bathungara near Cootamundra? Um, well. Predominantly because uh, some of our uh, neighbours are doing the reverse and that's, uh, the, the tree decline in our area is terrible. Uh, we still have neighbours. Macquarie Bank owns a significant property next door to us and they uh, they recently bulldozed thousands of these great trees over and burnt them and uh, it uh, certainly causes a lot of dismay and uh, they probably did a thousand of my lifetimes of damage in, in three months out here with the aid of uh, taxpayers' money through the Clean Energy Corporation. So we're getting some inquiries on the text line, Ashley, 0467 922 for some practical advice. Uh, people eager to make nesting boxes, the dimensions for the nest boxes for the superb parrot, and also perhaps where you can get ideas online. What would you say to them, Ashley? Um, I think best best talk to my brother because that's probably what I did in relation to the, the design and uh, setting up these boxes in the first place. So I think Neil's the man for that answer. Thank you so much, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley Hermes, regional farmer and Neil's brother, joining us from Bathungra near Cootamundra. So Neil, uh, what would be your advice to our listeners uh, thinking about creating nest boxes for superb parrots? What do they need to know?
Well, first of all, I'd, I'd just say that uh, my brother's doing a wonderful job down there in in, in rural New South Wales uh, to set a, a pattern for um, for uh, for the region. I mean, he's supported by many other uh, farmers who are very keen on conservation, but sadly, um, some aren't. So uh, he's doing a great job and has done for many years. And it comes from a lifetime of interest in in, in the natural history which we shared as children growing up in the in Canberra. Um, in terms of getting advice, um, it's unlikely that people will get superb parrots to nest in their gardens in the ACT and we haven't got to the point where they're, they're, they're that numerous yet and we still don't know what it is that attracts them to if it, well, part of the whole project with Ashley uh, on Ashley's property is to try and work out whether or not we can get superb parrots to use boxes. They seem to be very fussy but there's plenty of advice on building boxes. You can get them through a number of different websites. There's um, uh, BirdLife Australia has uh, information on the online and Nest Tales which is another um, another site. Uh, there's, there's a number of sites and I can give you that information after the show and you can uh, put it up um, and let people have those links. Um, but my suggestion is I'm, I, I live in suburban Canberra and I have nest boxes in my yard and I'm actually sitting in the garden as we speak watching a pair of galahs looking at a box that they nested in last year. Oh, how so you can do you can um, seriously I'm watching them they're peering in looking at the hole they chew away at the the oak and try and adjust it for their own purposes. But they produced three chicks last year from that particular box and there's another one adjacent to it that produced Eastern Rosella chicks last year. So you can do things in your own yards. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's uh, you know, you need to put them up carefully. You don't want to put them up in ways that will um, uh, potentially make birds nest in places that are not suitable for them and that could cause harm. So there are some tips and tricks uh, to it all. Uh, but yes, people can, in addition to planting out their gardens, Gardens and having plenty of native uh, plants in their gardens, uh, they can uh, add to it by having some boxes for some of these particularly spectacular parrots that we have all around us every day. Now, Neil, on the text line 0467 922 666, plenty of love for the superb parrots. Uh, Mark in Bungers says, Bungendore says, wow, had two visits yesterday, occasional visitors, reports Mark in Bungendore. And Jackie in Fadden says, I'm sure I heard the parrots in Fadden on my morning walk. So uh, a little more detail for particularly our listeners in regional New South Wales who might want to act on this. Where to go for more information, Neil? Okay, well, uh, as I as I said, Ashley, as Ashley said, there's a number of different approaches. One is you can plant out the food trees which and shrubs, which certainly support the birds. Uh, long term, you can be planting out uh, suitable trees that in, in 50 years' time, 100 years' time, will have suitable hollows. Uh, but in the interim, uh, in terms of the superb parrot particularly, we still don't know exactly what sorts of boxes uh, they they might use. So, because over the next couple of decades, we we you know the use of boxes might be an interim measure to help them uh, whilst we re-establish um, you know, appropriate uh, habitat for them. Uh, but we don't know yet exactly. They're pretty fussy. Um, you know, think p- p- birds like uh, galahs are pretty catholic. They'll, they'll get into any box that looks suitable for them but, um, but superb parrots are fussy and we're still trying to work out that. So it's really watch this story uh, and if we can uh, provide information about suitable boxes in the next couple of years um, uh, from the experiments that are being done on Ashley's property or on other properties through the region, uh, that, that information will get out and people should watch out for that. But there's certainly a lot of effort going into it and we hopefully will be able to work out how to, how to build these things to help them in the next little while. And Ashley, to you finally, I'm just wondering if there is assistance also uh, available for farmers like yourself uh, in the Cootamundra region or in our greater capital region who want to get involved. Is Are the nest boxes subsidised, uh, Ashley? Uh, we haven't, uh, we haven't uh, uh, obtained any subsidy for those sorts of things. We have received in the past uh, some grant money for re- revegetating small areas, so... Uh, each year we try to do a bit um, and uh, we did receive some money uh, through uh, the local land services for the trees and some of the fencing material for our project this year. Uh, So there is money out there um, but that's not really what drives us Well, thank you both so much for being with us and sharing your love of birds and also talking about your collaboration as brothers and bird lovers and doing your bit for superb parrots. It's been lovely speaking to you both. 
Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. And Neil, thanks for bringing the birds too from your garden. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Neil Hermes, Canberra ornithologist, and Ashley Hermes, his brother, regional farmer, joining us from Bathungra near Cootamundra. I wonder if you've seen superb parrots lately, or maybe you see them regularly. Love to see some photos on zero four six seven nine double two triple six. You are listening to ABC Radio Canberra. My name's Adie Francis. Great to be with you at twenty seven minutes past three.